there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to do a watercolor using a muted set of watercolors. Uh, there's been a huge popularity of muted or Moriandi art supplies, which is kind of like a muted pastel lately. It's been quite a quite a trend. And I've had these watercolors for a while. Uh, first my friend Rosie shared some of hers with me, and that's what those uh, spots are. And then um, Supervision actually sent me their, they're called Spun Sugar, this uh, this pastel set of watercolors. So um, I said I would use them in a video. They also sent me these um, Rock Plus Mica ones, Mica Layered Watercolor, which I thought might come in handy for the background. Um, and I scored, put those into pans a while back and they're all dried so I do have them kind of uh, rehydrating right now. So I'm just going to draw some mushrooms. When I look at this palette I think of kind of like just um, like a muted a muted palette of mushrooms I guess. It's uh, it's it, I'm somebody that's really more into color so this is really challenging because I gravitate towards more bright colors. Um, but also, it's fun to have kind of a, a different sort of challenge. Maybe I'll put another one right here, kind of a little bit lower to the ground. I'm sketching with a call erase pencil. Hopefully that shows up. I'm using a different setting on my camera because I was having some, some issues with, uh, with focusing, the camera focusing anyway. Uh, we'll take a chance on that eraser. All right, I want to put a background in because I want to have something kind of dark in here for the, um, to be able to use some of these colors against so they'll show up, but I'm not going to wet the mushroom area. The mushrooms I'm going to keep light because even though I'm going to paint them with the pastels, I don't know how opaque they are and I don't want to have to, um, I don't want to have to kind of fight that. So I'm just going to use the big number 12 round in my signature watercolor set here. And I am going to make kind of a, uh, a organic edged background. So I'm just going to wet the area where I want my paint to flow. Now I did wet my pans, but the bit of, of the, um, actually I've wet, wet everything, but I wet the pans of the Rock Plus Mica or the Mica layered watercolors and we'll see how they rehydrate. If they don't rehydrate well, I've got the tubes handy so I can squirt some tubes out. Um, I'm not really sure what I think about them. I've had uh, viewers asking me about them, but to be honest, I think you could probably use your metallic watercolors and mix them in with granulating watercolors and even some non-granulating colors and create a very similar effect. So, um, and they're kind of expensive, so I'm kind of on the fence. I'm kind of on the fence and they're also kind of more of like a specialty color. Like I'd, I'd only see myself really using them for backgrounds or for an area where I've got a large, um, a large like span that I'm going to just kind of put it in there and let it do its thing because with the granulating colors, the more you fuss with them and the more you layer with them, you lose that effect. And I would want, if I'm going to use them, I'd want to have that effect. You know what I mean? All right, so I've wet the background. This is 100% uh, Cotton Arteza watercolor greeting cards. I really like those greeting cards. They are, uh, they're high quality. I typically would use the Strathmore or the Canson watercolor greeting cards, but I would want, much rather have cotton, and these weren't that much more expensive. Okay, so I'm going to go for a synthetic to dig up that paint from the palette. This is my swatch for those colors, and I want something kind of dark in the background. Hmm, I'm just, I think that might be my darkest one, or maybe even, I think I might use those two. And I've got them in my granulating palette. I just put all my, uh, my supervision, which were, again, were, were shares from Rosie. I put them in here so that uh, I would have them handy. Uh, let's, oh, it seems to reactivate fine. Look at that, it is reactivating fine. I was a little nervous because sometimes uh, like colors with mica and it don't, and I just squirted them a few minutes ago. So let's see. Not a ton of flow, but I'm not surprised because the, um, 
because the heavy pigment particles in there would be a little more sluggish, I think. I really want to encourage the color to split apart. And give us some of that beautiful texture that these paints should provide. I'm glad they rewet well because I was a little I was a little concerned that they might not. I'm gonna go for um, some of the more purpley. I think it's almost like a purpley green. And I don't care if the background's muddy because this is a um, going to be a very muted painting. I clipped my watercolor paper to a um, to a board to a canvas panel actually, just one of the cheapy Arteza economy canvas panels. It's still wrapped up. The day this airs, on Wednesday, I'm filming this on Tuesday, but on Wednesday, um, it is my twin's 18th birthday, so that's exciting. I just found out that the package I shipped to Lila, who's further away, got there, got it there today, and I think I'll either go up and see Maisie, because she's pretty close, her campus is pretty close, uh, tomorrow. I'm liking the colors on the on this uh, background. I think I want to just pull a little smidgen of that color just over there, separate these elements a little bit. The only thing I don't like about doing a background like this is that you do get kind of like a cut and paste feel. I'm debating whether I want to put one more color in there or not. Maybe something with a little bit more green in it. Uh, oh, you know what though? The greens really don't show up on the white from this set, so um, so maybe I won't. Let's see. It's really easy to get kind of disoriented. Let's see. I used that color. No, I used that color. Maybe I'll put some of that color in there. And then once this background's in, I'm going to want to let it dry. So what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to scoot this back a little bit to see if I can get that a little closer to the bottom. I don't really want the paint to go under the binder clip because then it could leave a weird, a weird puddle. All right, I'm just going to leave this paint to do its thing. Hopefully it does some interesting stuff. And I'm seeing if I might want to take up any of the big puddles. I think I'm just going to leave it and let it do its thing. All right, so let your painting dry, and then when we come back, we're going to work on mushrooms, and hopefully we have something really interesting happening in the background. I'm back. Uh, this has been a couple hours since I, um, since I painted this, and the mica in that really shows up well. I'm not sure what I think of it, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, get our mushrooms painted, and I'm going to keep using that number eight round here. Well, I'm going to start using the number eight round. I'm going to start by wetting the stem. And then I am going to use, I think I will use um, the pink kind of in the bottom. And then uh, I'm going to use some of the brown. 
kind of like a brownish gray. Some of these colors had some interesting granulation effects to it too, so I'm wondering how that will look. I'm also going to add some of that to the bottom. These are somewhat opaque, but I wouldn't count on them being like high coverage or anything. Uh, it would be neat if they granulated out because there is some texture in the mushrooms that I think would be neat. I think it's because they grow so fast. They get that like almost crackly texture. And I'm also going to grab some of this maroony color here and add that up here where it's going to be shadowy. So even though this is a pastel set, luckily there are some uh, darker values so you can get that that darker. I'm going to have my light source kind of over here so I'll put a shadow on this side and also have some more shadow towards the bottom where uh, I'm going to have some moss growing. While I'm at it I am going to take that color and just kind of draw a wiggly choppy line here at the edge where kind of the underside meets the mushroom top side of the cap. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of a shadow there. And I'm going to bring that shadow over because that shadow is also, it's on the shadow side and it's also being shaded by that. And I think I'll just kind of, let me tip this so you can see my brush strokes here. I'm just going to suggest some of the gills on the mushroom. Now I'm going to clean my brush off and pick up some of the brown, brownish gray color. And I'm just going to blend it in. I notice there's no yellow, no like yellow tone in this, uh, in this set, which is kind of strange. But as long as you have a variety of values, you can, um, you know, you can go with that. Uh, maybe I'll use a pink. Maybe I'll use this kind of dusty rose color. Have some fun with it, you know? And then for my lighter value, I will go back in with this light pink. This is kind of fun, actually. Uh, it's fun to break out of your comfort zone and do something that you don't often do and uh, I kind of like the way that mushroom looks. I think it's kind of cute. All right, we're gonna do the stem over here. Uh, it may bleed a little bit into that area. Oh, you know what? I'm noticing that um, I already have lifting. So I'm gonna go back in with that dark. Yeah, your, your pastel colors are more likely to lift and so are just like sedimentary colors are so. Keep that in mind. I might run into some trouble when I paint a lighter color over those gills because they will lift probably, but we'll see what happens. I'm not too worried about it. This is just a greeting card, you know, don't get too, don't get too fussy. Go in with the, I'm gonna go with pink for the stem again. I'm surprised there's no like Naples yellow in this set. You think that would be a good, you know, pat if you want to get like a muted tone, a good pastel to put in there. Get that kind of, I guess, you know what color that is? That's like clay. It looks just like wet clay. Or at least the earthenware clay I've been using. These colors uh, are very earthy pastels. They're very muted. They have warm undertones, so you gotta be careful about mud. I specifically chose a subject that would be more, that was would be okay if it was a little more earthy looking. Um, the subjects, and I'll try to remember to link the reference photo. It's by Vidar Christensen on Unsplash. I thought would make a really good um, subject. So I was trying to find something that was muted. our mushrooms and I might even do a, do a little mixed media for highlights if I need it. I'll leave that one a little bit more pink. All right. 
going to go up to this mushroom. I'll start off with the pink. Start off with that highlight. Maybe this time I'll actually do the underside of that pink and then I'll paint the uh, the gills over it. That looks pretty dry. I could probably go right over with the gills over here. I do want to encourage a little bit of bleeding. I think that'd be kind of cute and fun and I'm not going to put a ton of time into this. I'll get a little bit of that. brownish color in there. I'll go in with the purple. Oh, I love the color bleeds there. That's really pretty. And on this one, I think I'll do the same thing, but I might leave a little bit of a gap. I didn't. I let it flow. That's all right. I love those unexpected happenings of watercolor. Charge some uh, purple in the shadow side. I'm not sure if it was the paper I swatched on or what, but I did see some granulation in some of these colors, so I think it would be cool to actually uh, push that fact. Maybe I'll throw a little bit of this really muted purple in here. Oh, that's really sluggish, but, I th but it looked like it was granulating good on the swatch, so I think that might be kind of fun. All right, I don't want back runs though, so what I'm gonna do is clean off my brush and dry it off really well. Grab my towel here. And I'm going to just kind of let the brush drink up the excess water. It's a thirsty brush. Let it drink up all the excess. All right, we're gonna let that dry and work on another part of the uh, of the piece. And I want to get some like foliage kind of happening. So again, sticking with the number eight brush. Plus, this is almost this is so opaque; it's almost gouache like. So I think I want to put like just like a little, a few little leaves. I'm gonna turn this so I can pull the stroke towards myself. I'll do the little press and lift leaves. I think a palette like this would be a lot more um, suitable to designers or illustrators than um, uh, than your everyday artist because it is such a quirky um, stylized group of colors. Like I know some people's arts that I've seen some modern illustration that would look so pretty with this uh, with this color palette. I'm trying to stay. Oh, I like that. I'm trying to stay within the. Um, the confines of my wiggly border because I think that's kind of pretty. So does that show up very well? I think it will when it dries. I think it's going to get a little bit lighter. Um, and then let's do, maybe I'll do the other green. These were wet pretty well. We'll do another another little branch like that. Just use a tip of your brush to get the fine. Or you could use your liner. Up to you. Yeah. 
and I'm going to I might have that a little too juicy as you get more experience you can push the stroke away from you but I find pulling it towards myself or my dominant hand works the best I'm gonna have to wait to do that stroke because I've got a really wet area there. And now I think I'll switch to the liner. And this, you know what, I'll use my bigger brush though to, to kick up a bunch of pigment here because uh, that could be a little much for this little brush. A little, It's a little too much wear and tear I think for a tiny brush like that. So I'm activating this disc of paint with my bigger brush. Um, I think that using the set straight from the tube might be a little bit more um, convenient because especially if you're gonna use liner brushes but also I don't think it's an everyday color palette so chances are you'll use it and then you'll you know you won't need to use it for a while so uh, I want to get some like uh, lichen and I really want to get that lichen I should probably should have painted that first and then done the then my little uh, my little leaves but maybe I'll have some of the lichen come over the leaves the leaves are like already dry I want the background to show through that metallic and darker color can even like do something a little more abstract you can kind of like press your brush down and then make the fuzz come off of it from the lichen if you want a thicker more random stroke I don't know if I like that or not actually I think I like the least of your strokes better I wonder if I could blot that off or if it's too late oh I'm able to all right good deal So one of the drawbacks to pastel colors, well, it's a few. Um, they're definitely more of a novelty product. They're not going to be as useful as other supplies in your stash. Um, they are not going to layer as well because they'll tend to lift up if you want to layer watercolors over it. But if you want to layer, um, uh, if you want to layer color pencil or crayon or pastel over it, they'll be fine. In fact, they're, they're going to have a little bit more tooth and be a little bit more chalky. Um, and they'll actually take like colored pencils a little bit better. So um, that's something to do if you like to do mixed media. I think I, this is probably my lightest value color. So I think I'll add some of that onto the... the uh, um, the little gills. Notice how the strokes um, go like a pumpkin ribs, kind of go with the shape of the the shape of the mushroom. Usually we'll see less movement with pastel colors as well, so um, you can even go in there when the paint is still damp and still be able to retain a line, which is, which is kind of nice. I'm going to go back in with the maroon color and I am going to put this edge back in, wiggly jiggly. When you have a real simple composition like this, look for all the interesting things and try to uh, uh, try to kind of enhance them or or um, 
can make the most of them. All right, I'm gonna dry this with the heat tool and then when we come back, we'll put our finishing touches on. All right, I have dried that with my heat tool and I'm gonna go in and use that maroon again. And I am just going to draw that wiggly, wiggly line between the mushroom cap and the bottom. I also see this background and I thought, oh, it'd be kind of cool if I added a little bit of a uh, ruffle in there because sometimes you get this like uh, interesting like texture on a mushroom. So I'm just going to blot off my number eight and I'm going to drag that shadow down a little bit. And then I'm also going to pull a little shadow up above from that too. Gonna add a little bit of a shadow right here. Want to give it a little bit of a raggedy edge so it look like gills of the mushroom are kind of um, are kind of informing that shadow a bit. Bring that down a little bit. more dark down here would be good too. And then again, just going to blend it out. I'll do the same over here. Just kind of add a little bit of, oh, need more, more water. Oh, and there's a little blossom there. I think I'll do that same thing. Blend it out with the damp, larger brush. It'll be a little dark. I'll lift some of that out. Doing a little bit of streakiness over there, so I'm just going to clean my brush, wipe off the extra, wipe off the extra water, and just kind of soften that edge. I don't mind a little bit of texture, but I was just catching that looked a little bit, a little strong. I wasn't sure if that bigger brush was clean or not, so I'm just rinsing it, and now I'm just going to drag that out a little bit. I want this mushroom darker than the one in front of it. It's like a little mushroom family. I think maybe I'll use the bigger brush to do the gills on this one. Okay. Now there are some colors there. Let's see, what colors haven't we used? We haven't used our blue, bluish purple colors. So I'm kind of thinking maybe we should. What could we do with those though? How about some little berries, like little berry plants? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna grab a Q-tip. Oh, last Q-tip in the drawer. What a lucky break. Um, and I am just gonna swirl that onto that blue on my palette. Work up a nice, um, 
a nice gob of that. Maybe do a little bit of the darker blue on one side. Hopefully it's picking that up. I'm not sure. Do some little little berries. Oh, that's kind of cute. I think it's cute. Should we do more? I feel like we need more. I like them. All right, now let's see if I can do a little bit of shading. I think I will go with a, no, I can do this one. I was gonna say, maybe I'll take a smaller brush, but let's take this darker blue here. Maybe add a little bit of that purple. Cause we need that darker value and we don't have a darker blue. So some of these colors seem pretty samey, honestly. It's like, it's almost like they could have done one gray and um, you know, if they did one gray, then they could have done slightly more. They don't have to be pastel. What do they call this? Cotton candy or sponge sugar? Sponge sugar. They could have had a little more vibrant color and then it would be a little bit more useful for mixing. However, this is not a set meant for mixing, so I guess this is fair. Um, let's dry this again. Well, maybe I can work on something else and leave that to dry. Oh, I need highlight. I guess I'll use this because this is my latest value thing. I want to highlight on the mushrooms. The mushrooms are actually glossy. In my reference photos, so I will kind of want to get that glossy. That glossy area like on the uh, This has been fun to paint. It's a challenge, but really fun. Actually, it's a fun color palette. I'm not gonna lie, that is kind of a fun color palette. Um, maybe I'll do some of the little, the darker green. I feel like my little blueberries need, you know what they need? They need some vines. So where's our liner? Let's do our liner. Let's do, let's try the darker green. Let's see if it will get enough contrast. I'm not sure if it will or not, but I know that mid green, it just doesn't stand out very much, so with our background. So let's do, let's try to do some vines. I'll try to get my hands out of the way. I'm gonna have, you wanna work from your shoulder when you do vines. Whoops, and make sure there's no water on the ferrule. And then, this might be too small of a, or you could do a pen even. I don't think it's gonna show up super dark anyway, so don't worry if your vines are a little, if they're a little um, wobbly and shocky or anything. 
All right, I want a little more moss and then, honestly, I think I'm gonna call it a day because there's only so much value contrast you're gonna be able to get here. I think I might use a little bit of white gouache just to, uh, uh, just to maybe highlight the, add a high highlight on the mushrooms and maybe a little highlight on our blueberries, but. This is a small canvas and a limited palette. Um, I think I'll take that dark purple though. That's a really pretty color. Uh, that might be... Might be worth putting on a... in a pan or something. Um, this is what it looks like on the white paper. It's got that pretty texture to it. I don't know. I mean, these colors are pretty. They're pretty colors. Uh, I don't know, I thought about taking all my pastel, uh, pastel colors and putting them in a palette themselves. Or just maybe I'll put these in a tiny little palette or something. Because I did put my uh, Shinhan SWC pastels in a little palette. Those are awfully fun. All right, let's just grab a little bleak of white. Have that handy. Oh, right here, right on my table. I'm going to just grab a little bit out and put it on a palette. So actually, let's put it on the uh, on the lid. This is an extremely opaque white. And um, this is probably too big of a brush. Let's get the liner out. I really don't know what I'm, where I'm going with this, but I think it'll be a cute little card. To send. Fun to play with colors and things you're not really accustomed to. There's some highlights on the leaves. It's fun because it's something different. It stretches your creativity. I was trying to dry those light green highlights just so I could put the white on there. It's not fully dry, but it'll be fine. Going back to the number eight round, and I'm just going to go in there with that brighter highlight. If I want a lot of control, I use my brush straight up like this. They call it bleed proof white because if you use a full strength, it is unlikely to lift or let the colors, like your colors you're using underneath bleed through like markers or other water soluble media. I'm trying to let those other tones Kind of show. All right, I'm going to call that done. Take the little clips off so we can see how it turned out. It's a little weird. It's a little different, but um, sometimes you need to do something a little weird and different. The metallic in the background is a little psychedelic, <laughs> but overall I think it's pretty cute and I hope you enjoyed this. You could always add more with colored pencils if you want to. I had fun with this and I hope you did too. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it and let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy crafting. Bye!